So we watched Saw on my friend's laptop. Huge thing to do in college. Like three three fellas just watching a movie on a laptop? Yeah. You, you didn't do that? No. Just toss it on. It was just put it on like the desk. No. Dim them lights. Have you ever heard of an HDMI cord? I don't think H- I don't think that really? like HDMIs were this was probably like two years before that. Okay. Yeah. This had to have been a Saturday night, by the way. <laughs> Brunch! Hit it, boys! Just a perilous week of tent. Of tent? Let's call it tent from now on. Everyone in the content game ah. is always calling it content. There is a we we need a new word for something like that. The tent material. Game. That's a but but that's not a new word. Material is no. an actual word. Yeah, and it doesn't really roll off the tongue. I I texted it to you in the last couple of days. At some point mentioned I was like, "There's a lot of tent coming up." And mm-hmm. I'm, and like we kept we kept the conversation going. There wasn't a pause in what are you talking about? But and calling you, it. You threw a you threw a, a, a apostrophe right before. Lord forgive me. Shouts out Grammarly. Yeah, and uh, and so that makes it a little bit more. I, I understood what you were getting at mm. when you say it. Tense a word. Yeah. And so it's hard. It's harder to understand what you're what you're saying. How you feel about all this tent that's going on? I feel a little bit overwhelmed. Like we've been doing a lot of shit this week and we want to keep doing a lot more shit. And like I have time, but it's just we're we're overwhelmed with with tent. I've worried about I worried about you the other day because stonks are up across the board for us. Stonks are I would say stonks are up. <laughs> Lord, forgive me on our friendship. Mm-hmm. I would say stonks are up on us creatively. Mm-hmm. Stonks are just up like the people are buzzing in the discord asking questions like you guys gonna talk about this thing on the podcast answering them all sorts of just stonks are breaking right yeah now. and it's very interesting because you do mention the the creative side of it and we have been like the juices have been flowing and shit For and sure. i don't know if it's just because like we feel like we're maybe in like a, a better place we like the podcast i feel like it's partially responsible like washed is responsible but like but definitely, but we. But we they're must, like they're not pushing say, us or anything. They're, they're, they're not, not doing it. They they're leaving us alone. They, they haven't done anything. Okay, <laughs> Wash hasn't done any. Like they, what? What they? We do? don't even have a fucking read this episode. What Way to do? go, Brett. They brought us on. They really. Here's what Wash has done. They just given us some more people to text. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> I like maybe like, if if we're texting a lot. Because I mean, stonks are also up on us texting. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, if I ever have to give any sort of speech about you, so if you get married oh, or no. die, it's more more likely that I'm just gonna die. And and if anything comes up where I have to like describe our friendship, I think that it's very interesting that you and I. I never feel ever very fittingly with the the podcast. We never start or end a conversation. <laughs> have you noticed that? Yes. <laughs> There's never. We've never said like "Hey" to each other. Good everything, morning, DJ. <laughs> everything is just like mid sentence mid thought continue like, picking up where we left off 15 minutes ago when we last talked and i don't know why i would squeeze that into a pete died or got married speech <laughs> but if i just ever had to like zoom out on pete and kind of and like our human behavior <laughs> yeah it, it's very interesting but i was wondering um something came up that i was like oh pete and i could do this and then i was like i've never really thought about or worried about pete getting burnt out like Pete needing to take a beat and just like turn I was, his brain off from because you are always in front of the computer, always like now with the streaming and everything. Yeah, you're. I think that you're kind of putting yourself out there more than. And I'm realizing as I say this, this sounds like sneaky condescending. I'm not. That's not what I'm trying to say. Like <laughs> you're. I could take it. You're like more is being sucked from you than usually is. That's correct, right? No. No, no, like I, I would say that I was for sure uh, burnt out at CBS, like towards oh, okay. the end. Like I was just my lifestyle had completely been compromised by the newsletter. Like I wasn't totally enjoying pretty much like anything. And I felt like it was taking away from the things that I wanted to do, like hockey and like the streaming stuff. And so I was just perpetually tired. And so I was for sure burnt out. I feel great now. 
Yeah, see, that's what somebody like you have that mindset of somebody who's just about to 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 realize they're burnt out and really crash. Like you, you're doing. Yeah, man, you're you're uh, Jesse from Saved by the Bell. Like I'm so excited, so excited, so scared. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I've I've been there too. I don't even know. Like if I were to take stock of like where am I at energy wise and everything, I have a headache every day. <laughs> I've been taking. <laughs> I've had to be like popping ibuprofen. Because every day I wake up and I'm like, oh my, what? Did, did, I didn't even, I haven't drank in like a month. Why does my head hurt? That's not true. I've been doing some, it's not going to surprise you. I got to keep up with all these Budweiser oh, and Bud Lights that are being sent our way. Uh, so I am chipping away at those. But I mean, I'm always kind of tired and like feeling like a little fried, but I'm also feeling i don't know probably similar to you like uh, for different reasons i'm like feeling a little more creative than i typically am so i don't know man i i feel good like yeah i, I do and it's it feels really nice like even when i'm tired i feel good listen I'm, are you hearing this <laughs> are you like do you, you know what i'm talking no. about with pete like he's like i am i i've been like exhausted for this week or in like during affleck week but it's but i can't complain about because i'm just doing a lot of shit that i want to do which is very, very cool. Unrelated to anything, do you remember hashtag Justin take a break? Yes. Yeah. Something to think about. <laughs> well, I will say I got worried this week because and you want you mentioned the stock stonks going up. Stonks are going up on your Twitter and so like you've had some banger tweets over the past week or two. A lot a lot of them related to playoff hockey. And there's just unlimited content when it comes to playoff hockey. It's very easy to be good at Twitter, but like you've been killing it. Knowing what I know about our dynamic, that worries me a little bit. Because anytime you get good at something, you're taking it away from me. Definitely. L like, you become good at some. Like, you become less depressed, I become more depressed. Yes. You learn to do something, I get worse at something. So, you becoming better at Twitter makes me worry. It's like, fuck. Haven't I'm about to suck at Twitter. Haven't you considered that you've gotten worse at Twitter? So bad, in fact, that <laughs> you think that my tweets are funny or good well either way it's it's like the bad news for me yeah right i think people, like people are probably going to unfollow you because you've been tossing some retweets on those and people are going to be like all right not we only get it. not only have been tossing people retweets used to say to me people used to like respond to me and be like we get it you think pete blackburn is funny <laughs> And I was like, I think he is. <laughs> I was like, I don't really know him, but I think like, I think he is pretty funny. Uh, don't, you don't mind? I'm gonna keep slapping RTs on this one. Not only have I been slapping the RTs, I embedded one of your tweets in my fucking art, my column this morning. Really? Yeah. Is that like the time that your was it at your last day at Uprocks or your last day at Fox? It wasn't your last day at Fox because well, that was a surprise. That was a surprise. Day. Yeah. Your last day. At I was in the middle of writing a column at Fox when I found out that i was done you're at your last day at up rocks they asked you to aggregate uh a story i did with jake debrusque oh about, yeah about him like rupturing his testicle yeah he had like a horrible uh he had like a really weird vague injury and i think his uh his ball sack split right open. And he, like i i didn't like make him talk about it or anything but i was just like hey what was it and he was like ah i don't know if people would want to would would really want to hear it and i was like try me whatever like th hey and uh it, it was just a bonker story and yeah. he was cool telling it and everything but it was just that and i had to write like as told to dj bean of weei or whatever it was that was a weird moment for me man that was weird moments because i was uh dj bean of weei <laughs> but no i slapped uh, i slapped that all um the meme of john ham and Don Draper presenting, give Oilers players to other teams. <laughs> Just threw that into my column this morning. I love that. I I, I stole that template. I don't th I don't see that template used enough. Of like, I mean, you, sloppy you steal Don the template. Draper. That's what a meme is. That is true. <laughs> but the the like sloppy Don Draper. Uh, I believe at this point he's he like had a kind of rough presentation. He's like got like the mid c series sweats going on where he's like, like he's clearly bom he's drunk. clearly bombing the pitch yeah. and it's like a bad idea right and they're like you know like let let's meet next week i like, come up with something new we'll come back next and he's like just trying to win it on the spot and he's like 
how about this? Uh, and they're like, no, it would be we're we're, we're not going to ask you to come up with something new on the spot. And Here, like, I got something. This, I got something. Yeah, fuck mountain. Yeah, right. He's, <laughs> he's Joe Bluth. Um, that that's such a good <laughs> good. <laughs> me though, and it's it's like a it's like a less annoying dude with sign. Yeah, yeah. Fuck dude, dude with sign. Dude with sign. I'm uh, glad that people are starting to realize that he sucks. I'm not into that guy. Uh, yeah, more and more. I think I might still follow him. Or maybe it gets promoted or something. But more and more often, I'll see one of his posts, and I will not have a liked by friend A, friend B, friend C, and 100,000 others. It'll just be like, liked by one of your friends and 100,000 others. And then you unfollow the friend. And I'm like, this is very easy. <laughs> right, that's, that, that's why it is. I, 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 I always unfollow. <laughs> That would be a great, really weird campaign to start. <laughs> Unfollow your friends if they pop up as the liked by your friend on a dude with the sign thing. Hell yeah. Yeah. So stonks up on a lot of things creatively, but we've just got tent flying at us. We are like the two of the victims in uh, – it uh, – it was in, in Jigsaw. HBO has been pummeling us with, I don't know if you've flipped by an HBO recently. No. HBO is constantly showing really? Saw movies. So I've like, uh, my most recently thing is like NBC Sports for hockey, USA for hockey, uh, CNBC. Is that it? Yeah. CNBC for hockey or like HBO for like Saw 4 <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. So I've been flipping through. Uh, and, and catching a lot of Saw movies. I know we've talked about how uh, there's some moral questions to have with Saw, which uh, obviously. Yes, a lot it's of, a movie about a serial killer. Right, yeah. <laughs> a lo- lot, of, lot of horrible deaths in there. But uh, he is so not even close. And he, he and his uh, apprentices are so not even close to getting it. Again, A the whole killing thing but like the victims they choose get outrageous the beginning of saw the final chapter originally called saw 3d was two guys have a thing there's uh there's like a two table saws oh yeah and they have to push them at each other and if they don't there's a third table saw that has a woman up top and it turns out this woman has been dating both of these guys and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I know. someone yeah. dies for cheating yeah. or someone dies because they're getting cheated on. Yeah. That is <laughs> taking it to all sorts of levels where it doesn't need to go. Right. Holy. So, and there is that. And there's I, a lot of the the uh, the ones in subsequent Saw movies, like Saw like five, Saw six or whatever, will be a bunch of people are doing something. And, like, one of them has to die. Or it'll be, like, hey, you have to... It's, like, this... If it's, say, it's person A's game, they'll get to a thing where it'll be, like, three of your colleagues are here. You choose which one of them lives. And I was, like, why did... <laughs> why does an innocent person have to die? Right, why <laughs> did people have to... Die? Yeah, one of them... There's, like, a... I think it's, uh... Five, maybe? It's very... That's, like, the most political saw movie up until spiral but uh it's about like the healthcare industry and well i mean the first one was a little bit about the healthcare industry too because the, w- the guy was a doctor yeah and he uh, i mean he there was a cheating element to that one wasn't there yeah he's he was cheating having on affair. his wife yeah, yeah. but uh, like there was an element to like um like not taking care of people who don't have insurance and shit like that yeah. in the first so, one saw five leans into that it's the insurance company and it's the guy who came up with uh, the algorithm they use to decide whether or not somebody gets coverage. And one of the things is he gets to – there are two people on, like, planks, and they – like, trigger warning, disgusting, horrible, or whatever. But uh, they have, like, barbed wire nooses around their necks, and he has to save – one of the two people and one of them is like an out of shape uh like middle-aged woman who smokes or something like that and the other one is like a healthy young man 
but the healthy young man doesn't have a lot of family the woman has kids and all sorts of sorts of stuff and like the lesson to be taught to him is neither one of these per- people is more deserving to live than the next but most people on paper would like quote unquote root for the person with the family like the mother etc cetera, etc cetera. I'm like okay well then just tell him that don't make somebody die over that <laughs> so like this fucking kid dies over this yeah i mean and it's stonks down on it's jigsaw it's fucked up man <laughs> yeah i don't think anybody's being like it does sort of prop itself up as like whull. makes a thing yeah but no <laughs> right bad but job I, I also like in the aspect of the saw universe like i could see how the guy would start off by like thinking that he was being this moral yeah. uh oh uh what do you want to call it like an overseer or yeah, whatever and yeah. like teaching people a lesson and then getting carried away with it well, let me tell you he gets carried away with it also an- another one I'm j- I'm, this will be the last of me <laughs> ranting about Please. how saw is unfair at the en- uh at the end of jigsaw there's two people who have been going through like this game with a bunch of other people and they wake up in a room where they're chained to like the wall or whatever and there's a gun in the middle of them and the tape says no john kramer himself comes in and like explains everything to them and he's like there's only one bullet in this gun uh salvation like salvation is in this gun or whatever so the woman's like i'm sorry i have to kill you i gotta get out of this thing and as she's about to do it like the guy's like oh shit it's a riddle salvation's in the okay so the keys and she shoots the gun and it backfires because he programmed it to kill whoever shoots it but the key was in the bullet oh jesus so they but then so then she dies because she shoots self and this guy dies because because he's just left there yeah he's like i didn't figure out a riddle (laughs) in time so i die that's fucked that's a lot of them i i, I don't want to go back that one's kind of funny though but like if, if you if we went through all of the saw deaths i bet a decent amount of them would be like they didn't figure out a riddle yeah well it would be like a good exercise to rank the unfairness of saw traps oh man i bet that I bet there's on YouTube or something horrible. There's like a like a super cut of all of them or something. But there are a lot of them. Again, like none of them are fair, but a lot of them are. But a lot of them you like literally can't. You, there's no no chance that you're gonna fucking. And like, what do if it? the person has like a learning disability or something? Right. And like, legitimately. I think the first one in Spiral was like a legitimately impossible one. Yeah, because like he would have bled out. He would have bled out and died. Yeah. Even at the end of Saw One. Uh, because I wa- I did watch that during the marathon. When Dr. Gordon hacks his leg off, yeah. he goes over to Adam and he's like, look, man, I know you're scared right now. I know that like you're probably freaking out, but I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to get help and we're going to come back and I'm going to get you. It's and like, I'm like, you, you just are sawed your dying. Foot off. Yeah. You're a doctor. <laughs> right? Don't have side conversations. You are That's currently so true. dying. <laughs> So and like as soon as he they show in like a later one like as soon as he gets out of there he dies like in the hallway. (laughs) No, that's Adam because Adam ends up cutting his uh, his leg off like later, and Amanda like finds him and I think she suffocates him or something. But like he dies in the hallway. (laughs) Yeah. But like when Doctor Gordon like limps away, I think that like John Kramer is like waiting for him (laughs) to like perform an immediate surgery to save him because like. A lot of these things, like, even if you get out of it, it's such a small chance. And a lot of the traps, it's like, if you don't do it within 60 seconds, this thing's going to happen. Like, what if you do the thing and then, like, say it's an, there's an explosive element or something? Like, what if you like, don't get away from the explosive? That's like, true. There's so yeah. many things. Uh, or, like, what if you, like, don't roll away from whatever's going to hit you the right way? So messed up. That's my rant. <laughs> also, like in the, in this, when you're talking about unfair and like immoral things, in the second one, there's like a one of the girls. It might be Amanda. She's like a drug drug addict, yeah. and there's just like a fucking pit of syringes. Yeah, that you have yeah. to dive in. It's like she's a drug addict. Yeah. Oh, th- these. I mean, Amanda is chosen 
because she's a drug addict. Right. That's fucked up. Like, if, if you were to explain this movie to somebody, we are like... It's like, you are not a bad person if you're a drug addict. Right. Like, you watch this through the lens of now, and it's like, Hello, Amanda. You, you like drugs. are a drug addict. And, like, the viewer is like, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Poor Amanda. And she, wait, she also has to do, a th- like, a thing now? She Are you going to kill her? <laughs> because she's, like, got, it's like, horrible. a horrible disease? Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. So John Kramer, I don't know who I am, like canceled. calling out John Kramer, but uh, yeah, John Kramer canceled. I think they're slick with that movie. Very unfair. Uh, but speaking of which, like the the tent game is is ramping up. <laughs> so much content. Let's talk about <laughs> Saw for forty five minutes. <laughs> right. No, the tent game is is ramping up because I think that we've gotten really good at going back to like bullshitting on this podcast mm. and being good about. Like not having stuff to talk about and just getting our way through an hour, which is back in the day. Let me tell you, yeah, that's how this podcast essentially started. Yeah, we were just bullshit for an hour, and uh, for a while, I think we were in like the the mentality where it's like we gotta have stuff, we gotta we gotta have we gotta run down like four topics or whatever. And like during like the pandemic, nothing was happening, so we we're like f- finding our way I- into getting through an hour pretty pretty easily. And now we got movies back. So, like, the movies are stacking up. We got stuff that we want to talk about and then content on top of that. Yeah. We've and got... then you got movies that, like, carry over into the next week, like fucking Saw. I know. This, right. You, <laughs> you always have to allow for the possibility that a movie is going to be a one, a two to six episode arc. Arc. Yeah. I mean, Mid- Midsommar messed us up. No, Mamma, Mamma Mia, Mia was the first one. Yeah, Mamma, Mamma Mia was the was... first one that, like, we legitimately had a summer of Mamma Mia right. content. Like, this is what our podcast is about for one year. But this week, in addition to having watched season three of Master of None, a.k.a. Moments in Love, there's, I mean, we're, we started to watch Mayor of Easttown. Do you, do you watch that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, How much did you get through? I just did one. This is a very tough time to be like chipping away at stuff because the hockey yeah. and basketball to a degree is uh coming fast and furious. But I will say like I I flew through I'm gonna, Ma- yeah. Mayor of East Town. I'm, the first episode's pretty slow. Yeah. But who boy. I'll probably be done by like tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. would be my guess. Yeah. Um but Friday, Dog Joker comes out. And while you're there, Maybe you see a quiet place too because that comes out. These those are both like huge, huge movies. Uh, like uh, expectations heading into the to the weekend for those two. My expectation and my hope is that I see both Friday. Um, but I mean, like in terms of like, are they good? Yeah, I I have a uh, a, a a pretty strong feeling that a quiet place two is gonna rock. Yeah, and uh, and I haven't seen any of the reviews or anything, but I, I just have a feeling that. Quiet Place 2 is going to be very, very, very good. Um, and Dog Joker is going to be, like, fine. I hope that Dog Joker is at least chaotic. I agree with you on Quiet Place 2. I have high expectations for that. I think that I've seen in passing people say that it's really good. Okay, cool. But, I mean... It's, it's one of those movies, too, where it's like, I definitely didn't need it. And when they announced it, I was like, ah... Uh, like I liked, I liked the element of the first one not explaining anything. Yeah, I, I, I really did. I liked that they were just like some, some fucking shit happened, and here's where we are. Yeah. So I like that, and the fact that they're kind of doing like a, an origin story. By the way, I love the aspect of just referring to every origin story as, as something, something Joker. Joker. Yeah, a thousand percent. And did it with um, uh, the their uh, Timothy Chalamet, Wonka Joker. It's speaking of ibuprofen. Might need to pop a couple of those for the old uh, Chalamet fatigue. He will be. I don't think that applies anymore. I yeah, that's over. He took a break. Yeah, he 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 did what he was told. <laughs> took a little break. It's all good. He will be playing Willy Wonka in the Wonka origin story. What are we dubbing that? Are we dubbing that Wonka Joker? Or are we dubbing? I called it, it like... Candy Joker. Oh, Candy Joker. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's better. I didn't consult you on it. Yeah, I just immediately. No, I think I think that's the, the right call. Candy Joker yeah. tweet. Yeah, I think that's got a, good a few call. likes. <laughs> Getting pretty good at Twitter. <laughs> um, yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm into that. 
Candy Joker? Yeah, I'm into Candy Joker. Yeah. I'd like a... Uh, I hope that it's fucked up, though. Like, yeah. Like, you can't... Origin stories have to be fucked up. They gotta be gritty origin <laughs> stories. They don't have to be, but, like, it's 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 kind of cool when they are. Yeah. Like, and and Willy Wonka, I think, is a fucked up enough character that, like, where his, his like, fucked upness is not addressed yeah. in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I hope that the the uh, the Joker story sort of takes that and addresses it. Fun fact: there is a Willy Wonka saw connection in the Dave Bean universe. When I was in college, for whatever reason, my uh, one of my friends referenced like, "Oh, Willy Wonka!" I w- like I was looking at a list the other day. First time I've ever seen it. There online, there was like a there was a list. It was ranking things, and I was like. People, they should start doing that regularly. And he was like, yeah, it was cool. Like, I read it, had my attention. I was on that website for like 10 minutes. And I was like, hmm, there might be something there. And then, let me tell you, that took off. I'm making a reference to that at one point, the internet was not just lists. lists. Yeah. This, but this was like early in the list game. My friend was like, yo, there's a list. It's got like the best scary movies. And he said that, I'm, I'm not. A, I was not a scary movie guy at the time. I don't think Blumhouse existed at the time. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, but he was like, Willy Wonka's on there. It's crazy. Do you consider Willy Wonka a scary movie or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a scary movie? I was like, No. But there is that one scene, and you know the scene when they're like going through the. It's either a tunnel, a tunnel. or a, or like a river or something. There's something that's like just like straight up fucked. Yeah. And that qualified for whatever reason. So it was on this list of like best scary movies. I mean, I guess in if you like really think about it, it's it's like not overtly scary. Yeah. But like there's and there's elements of terror. That movie can freak you. That movie yeah. could easily freak you out. I, um, I think the one that pops into my head is like the um like the very small, like claustrophobic hallway. Ooh. Where like there it's just very tiny. Could we stand to do a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory rewatch? Yeah. That's not bad. I don't hate that idea. But uh, so me and my two friends like went through this list of like s- best scary movies. And I think Saw was high on the list. And uh, so not really a scary movie. Yeah. It, it's just like a torture movie. <laughs> and it got to it. And well, this was the first one. So that that was like more of like a like a, a mystery I mean, scary. psychological thriller. Yeah, I'd say more right, than a right. Yeah, there was. Um, so we uh, they, they got to Saw, and both my friends were like, "Yo, Saw's a great movie." And I was like, "Isn't that like the it, that's just like super gross and bloody, right?" And they were like, "Yeah, but it's like actually a good movie." So we watched Saw on my friend's laptop. Huge thing to do in college. Like three three fellas just watching a movie on a laptop. Yeah, you you didn't do that. No, just toss it on. It was just put it on like the desk. No. Dim them lights. Have you ever heard of an HDMI cord? I don't think H. I don't think that really? like HDMI's. Were, this was probably like two years before that. Okay. Yeah, this had to have been a Saturday night, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> had to have been. Um, and we watched it, and I remember that when Adam is taking the pictures in his apartment because uh like all the lights go off this is like the scene where he gets abducted and he's got his camera with him so Mm -hmm. he just keeps taking pictures for the flash i was like done i was like i'm not watching i was like because you're just waiting for a jump scare for a jump scare and you think i don't know if people know this but like your mind and certainly movies are programmed for like the uh rule of three where like, he'll take a picture, you see the flash, take a picture, you see the flash, and the third one is going to be the one where they get him. And it's, like, seven or eight or something. So, it's, re- like, sus- th- th- that might be the most suspenseful thing this side of Lalo Salamanca visiting, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kim something. Kim Wexler. Yeah. You know, that's a suspenseful scene. It sure bro. is. Really suspenseful. God, I miss that show. So, anyway. We watched that. We watched Saw. And then a couple months later, they were like, there's a new Saw coming out. You want to go see it? So I just like became a guy that saw those movies. Yeah. And now I do sh- Blumhouse stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and Saw stuff. Boy, I've gr- grown so much. So 
There is a uh, yeah. We'll watch Willy Wonka, and we'll certainly watch Candy Joker. Mm-hmm. But first things first, Dog Joker. I don't know if we should have watched the. D- they did a hundred one Dalmatians that didn't win any awards, like ten twenty years ago. Wait, what? Sorry, I was. Th- I had they did sh- a live I'd... action hundred one Dalmatians, and who is in that? Glenn I told Close. you it didn't win any awards. Glenn Close. Glenn I, for- Close. I forgot about that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Did you uh, see that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I didn't. Um, sorry, I, I my mind is stuck on Chalamet because, like, I said that uh, Chalamet exhaustion is gone. I think that it might be coming back because he's going to be in a shitload of stuff because I just keep remembering roles that he picked up. He's obviously in Dune, and Dune looks like it's going to be awesome. What's that? Dune. Dune. Yeah, Dune is, like, the big the big movie, I think, this year. I believe that comes out at the end of the year, but it's, like, the big, big movie. It has, like, Oscar Isaac um it's got like a lot of good people in it interesting chalamet's in that he's also doing the uh the bob dylan biopic that's right yeah i forgot happy 80th birthday to bob dylan who yesterday turned uh 80 years old sorry for uh sorry that my brain got caught on that for a little bit but yeah please uh, huh please take (laughs) us to chalamet anytime you'd like just know that we're we're treading dangerous waters when we get there. We don't want either of us to. I sleepy. I never got Chalamet exhaustion. I, I, I loved, think I was the only I, one with yeah, it. I love that kid. He rules. Yeah, um, but I I so th- the reason I had it was because everything be, was about how much everyone loved Timothy yeah, Chalamet. Yeah, and like every you had, I think it's like the t- Timothy Chalamet Taylor Swift. We we don't have to think that everything that he does is the best fucking thing in the world. Right, and also you know what's about me. I'm a. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Ansel Elgort? Oh, no. I'm an Ansel Elgort guy. No. He, uh, I, I think. Lightly. We, we shouldn't have to mention this every time we Lightly. mention anybody, but he, I think, was exposed for like being a weirdo. Yeah. He like said that he was like in love I with th- uh, I think that he also, Jalene Woodley. I think that he also had like some like underage. That's not a weird, by the way. Like You can be in love with somebody. Yeah. Provided, like, the... I think he had like a thing with like an underage. Ah. Uh girl type so like deal uh james franco stuff sort of yeah i don't know i don't want to be wrong so i'll just interesting yeah on the subject of people who have uh been in the the public eye for the wrong reasons i in preparation for season three of master of none i chose to fall asleep to aziz ansari's most recent special which i remember at the time really not being a fan of mainly because he wore a vintage Metallica Ride the Lightning shirt. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what my problem was, why I had such an issue with that. I think you it's having because... A, you th- having a problem with, with like something very not that bad? Right. <laughs> that like should not be a big deal at all. I think I just had an issue with how in vogue Metallica shirts had become. And like I spent my whole life, or like young life, getting shit for wearing a Metallica shirt every day. And then like I grow up and everybody is wearing Metallica shirts. Yeah, I don't I I, I it bothers me too. Like it bothers me that like Target sells yeah. vintage band shirts. And yeah. it's like I don't wanna like gatekeep, but it's like I know you right. don't like this. You just you're wearing it because you think it's cool. So that's where I'm like, what an asshole I am. Like there's a great chance like that Aziz Ansari likes Loves Metallica. Metallica yeah. He is a american kid who grew like grew up in the 90s or he's got to be he's probably like five six years older than us something like that mid 80s right so like he probably he probably like experienced maybe he probably like experienced like the black album in its time like he was like around when metallica was the biggest band in the world so i don't know for whatever reason i just like associate metallica metallica with my own experience which is something that a lot of people do that hopefully we're all working on but i'm like you don't like Metallica. You weren't some annoying kid with ADHD who only liked guitar lessons. Fuck you, Izzy's on. Sorry, you're just being a poser. Uh, so that's unfair of me. Anyway, I re I, I went and uh, rewatched it, and it actually was quite good. Really? Yeah. It was. It just wasn't kind of like Master of None season three. Its purpose wasn't necessarily comedy. Yeah, that's what that's what I remember it being. It wasn't like. He wasn't telling jokes. He was telling stories. Right. He was telling stories, but also like, and maybe it's because I've had enough distance from it, talking about a lot of things that white people do that I think at the time, I don't think I had issue that 
I think I was mainly upset with the T-shirt, so I don't think I had any. <laughs> you didn't listen to with, any of the material. Yeah, I don't think I had any issue with what he was saying about uh, the about the white folks, but because um, he talks about white folks all the time, and white folks uh, often are provide great material, provide material <laughs> for like what the hell are these people doing? But it it actually like it. He made a lot of good points about like the performative stuff of like white people doing stuff for other white people versus doing stuff for like the a world good reason and yeah. a good reason right so there's it was good like and it was it was really thoughtful and uh i don't know i legitimately think i was just like mad about that metallic shirt because i think that even like i do print, remember a big part of the uh the review episode being yeah. like fuck aziz <laughs> i think it was like lightly tie-dyed too and i was like ooh, i had that t-shirt that did not come in tie-dyed that is like a new t-shirt that you bought redlining came out in 1982 my guy like get out of here a lot Who of cares stuff man even if they like i don't know <laughs> even if it is a new t-shirt like it's yeah. a new could be a new t-shirt for an album that you really liked yeah so shout out shout out aziz there <laughs> uh want to talk about master of none absolutely season, i do season three i've watched uh i should uh say i have i've watched uh two plus two plus episodes i banged it all out how many are there there's five. Okay. Two of them are long. So you've got you've done one of the long ones. And um yeah, it's two I think like hour long episodes, hour plus and three twenty to thirty minute ones or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's about Denise. It's obviously set a few li- few years later in Master of None. Denise has made it as an author. You see in the show that she she works for like magazines and stuff, and because they're like going to events for places that she works. It's I didn't remember her meets. ever being a writer. Yeah, she meets. I don't know if she's writing. I think she might just be like doing the thing that a lot of people do, which is like working in a field or at a job that's like adjacent to what you actually want to be doing. Trying to get a foot in the door, right? Like, kind of like like I'm a writer, so I like do this job at. A magazine, which is an important job, but it's not necessarily the thing that I'm setting it's, out to do. I mean, it's like what Ellen does right now. She's like, she wants to be a news. She wants to be a on camera person. She's working at uh, Chronicle just yeah. to kind of like learn the business, get her foot in the door. Awesome. Ellen should be on camera. What's everyone's problem? Uh, Chronicle's a tough place to to get on camera. I uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make some calls. <laughs> okay. I actually do know somebody pretty high up there. I think. I don't know if they're still there. I haven't watched Chronicle in a long time. The the call's probably not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh she's now made it as an author, has a best-selling book, has a wife, has an awesome house. Awesome house. Oh, what a dream God. house. And her wife is like an interior designer. The house is like, it looks amazing. Oh my god! That's... I want to, I want to, I wanted to say this, but like, I am so glad that they shot on film. It's shot on film, yeah, uh, and it looks awesome. And I really like that they shot on film, especially with like the house scenes, because it makes it feel a lot more intimate and a lot more warm. Yeah, and I think that was a very good artistic choice. Different, and maybe this is shooting on film, but it's definitely a different aspect ratio. Yeah, I think that's that's part of the sh- shooting on film. Okay, so. It is, it looks it gorgeous. It looks awesome, yeah. And part of it, I don't know if this is necessarily a, a challenge people might have with it, but it looks so good and, like, so vintage and classic that a lot, like, all of it is, like, modern, relatable things, which that's what Master of None is. And sometimes I feel like that can kind of clash. Where, like, this is... Uh, I think, like, Bill Burr says this at the beginning of one of his stand-up specials. He's at this, like, palatial, like, gorgeous, like, hall where he's doing this show. And he's like, well, this is just inappropriate for <laughs> yeah. the shit that I'm about to do. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, yeah, it's like you watch And not, it, not to say that, like, Master of None is shit or but I'm saying, like... Like, like the it, social network was filmed in black and white. <laughs> right, like, it's, like, so... It's so, so beautiful that then you see, like... Like our daily, like people our age or yeah. people of, of our generation, like 
our struggles and our bullshit and our but fights I think and that, I think that like a uh, like Master of None has had a, like a, a very strong transformation from from season one to now. Yeah, but it's always been shot really well and it's always been sort of warm. And yeah, so I think that. It's sort of you. You've come to expect it. It's not that far out of the norms for it to be jarring for me. Yeah. So this is different, obviously, mm-hmm. but it it very much still feels like Master of None, and and uh, Dev is still in it. And there were a couple, like initially, when you see Dev, at least I felt I'm like, uh oh, like when when I'm not seeing this, like kind of through Dev's prism or like with dev being the main character do i feel like that's actually still dev or do i feel like aziz ansari is playing uh supporting character in like a denise show does that make sense yeah no where i was yeah. like this just this could just be like an aziz ansari character yeah but i mean like it, aziz needs needs like the depth to to see him as more than aziz and then the more you watch it so uh, so uh, denise is married to alicia who decorated the hell <laughs> out of this home. And Dev comes and like initially he comes, he's got his girlfriend and like they they're having a dinner and everything. And at first I'm like, ah, uh, this this just kind of feels like it's any character and it's not Dev. And the more you watch it, you realize it's because Dev has become just any fucking guy in his like late thirties. And it's so sad. And it builds, and then, like, they eventually just, like, pour it all out. They're like, yo, Dev just became, like, any guy He had, like, in the, his the soul sucked out of him, basically. And it's so, so... I didn't... I think I texted you. I was like, there is a word to describe this show, and I don't want to do it yet, because yeah, I don't want to give it away. Depressing. Yeah. It is so depressing. Yeah, it is. And, like, and it's it makes it worse, too, because, like, it's been so long... We haven't had, and it's the first episode, so you you don't have the the frame of reference of like who Dev was, and you're just, the, as soon as he comes back, you're so happy to see him, and he's just not the same guy. Yeah, he is. That's a perfect way of putting it. Like he's had the soul sucked out of him. He's with a girl who, I mean, the first couple of scenes, you can't tell who somebody is off of a couple of scenes. But you realize pretty quickly, like, these people just settled for each other. Like, they feel that they should be some with someone at their age. And they're horrible to each other. Like, they're so, so mean to each other. She is so mean to him. Like, calls she's basically calling him ugly, saying, like, he should've can't act hair, anymore because of his hair. hair. Plugs. And I'm like, yo, like, this is... It's a lot of, like, voicing insecurities that that person probably has and i was just like covering my ears it was so and, uncomfortable and then like there's a heart to heart where dev's like yo denise like i'm so happy for you but like like i'm embarrassed to even talk to you because like i just don't like where my life is right now and you're killing it and that's great but like i feel like i can't even be part of your life because like you're just this like successful person and i just can't relate to that yeah and and like it's worse than that too because he like blames her for the fact that they're not friends anymore because he's like you blew up and got too big for me and then like eventually it's revealed that like he is insecure about where he is and so like he is tanking their relationship because it makes him feel bad and yet he's pinning it on her it's very fucked up but like i feel like this show is always at its best when it's exploring relationships between people whether it's friendships whether it's actual like romantic relationships and it does it in such an honest and sort of painful way and like the like that's why i'm saying the transition from season one to now is so there's such an arc there because season one has a a bunch of goofy stuff and it's like it feels like it's kind of trying to be like a an artsy sitcom and then i think it started to realize the show started to realize and the writers started to realize that they were good at exploring like the interpersonal stuff. Yeah. And this is just all of that so far. And it, it's amazing, but it's so, so depressing. And maybe, maybe that's why I like the show so much because like your favorite episode is the, the the bottle episode mornings. And that is, 
it shows like the deterioration of a relationship. Oh yeah, and it is very very real. Give it and, to me, Zaddy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, like I think that's where the show is at its best. I'm. Th- this isn't like grandstanding or anything, but like I am. I'm like a. I think a bigger believer in cause and effect than I think like the internet can be at points where like I like to think of like these two people are fighting or whatever. Like I'll just give the example of like master of none. Like it's probably not that like this person did this bad thing to this person. So this is the good guy. That's the bad guy. Like I really believe like in like the, the hurt people hurt people thing of like, so, all right, so this person's going through something. Why did they do this? Well, and that's not to excuse, like, this person, like, bailed on this person or did whatever. I mean, I honestly, I had the same issue listening to uh, Traitor by Olivia Rodrigo. I'm like, hey, Olivia, I know you're young, and we're all on this ride together, and we're all learning things and everything. But, like, if somebody breaks up with you, it's not necessarily because, like, they're – yeah, a bad person like they that person people are complex man yeah that person could have like had shit going on like mm-hmm. that things could have been painful for that person pain that that person finds so real that they can't even acknowledge it to you mm-hmm. like their partner in this thing can you consider like anyway yeah I, I mean i like when when shows and movies and stuff explore the sides of like n- there's not necessarily good and evil like a good person bad person it's people are fucking complex and sometimes those complexities really don't mix well and people who are normally good do shitty things and shitty people can also like come come back and do good things yeah and master of none really does get into that like Mm -hmm. i mean you you said it perfectly where like that argument starts with like, what the fuck? You got so big. Now I'm just fucking sitting here with my schmenzer in my hand and I got no friends. Thanks a lot, best friend. <laughs> and you're like, damn, Denise sucks. We she don't blew like her up and anymore. forgot where she came from. Right. <laughs> Man, he was going to all those Thanksgivings. <laughs> like right. he was he was keeping things light, shouting across the table to Grandma Ernestine when <laughs> your mom and your aunt were just being straight up horrible. Think of the think he has been there for you. And then like as you said, it gets to the point where he's like, yo, like I, I've been tanking this because of how bad I feel about myself. Things like that, I think, are so real. Because I'm sure that everybody's been there before where like they've tanked something. It doesn't have to be a, a romantic relationship. It doesn't have to be a friendship. It could just be an opportunity where like... And you don't have to hate somebody to be like jealous of them. Yeah. And, and sort of like hold that against them. Yeah. That's just like a, a thing that I think applies to a lot of people where it's like... A lot of the times you don't want to see people doing better than you. Yeah. And je- yeah, jealousy is another thing where like I've I've had an interesting relationship with jealousy in my life where like I've it took me a long time to like realize that like jealousy is like a human thing. Like I like whenever I've like been jealous of somebody I've been like oh, and I've tried to talk myself into this like that's a ho- don't be jealous. That's like, it's such an ugly and it obviously is an ugly quality. Mm-hmm. But like it's also like a real thing. So like if you are jealous of somebody, it's not it's not necessarily like, that like you're being a bad person or anything. It's like that for a mil- whatever you should just reasons. be able to recognize it. And yeah, right. It's yeah. like, OK, so th- this is this is jealousy. This is what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. So Master of None still does that. And you get that in the first episode. And it's great. It gets it's very quickly. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. It's very quickly. This is this season is marriage story, mm-hmm. where it's really the dissolving of a relationship and a love. And I guess I, I I'm not going to spoil it for you, so I can't say where it well, goes. But it happens pretty quick. Like right. the, the the dissolution, yeah, of the of the marriage happens pretty quick uh, in episode two. Well, right. Fuck. That's a spoiler. But I saw you already said it. But like, right. It's it happens quick. But I, I I don't know where it goes because I just started episode three. But I did see sort of the 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 wheels starting to move. And God, if if you don't get like really really hit by it at the beginning of episode three, it's 
it's already, from what I've seen, extremely depressing because we talked about the house. Yeah. The house gets cleaned out, and you're yeah. like, fuck, that is... that That's so depressing. That always depresses me. Like, even when I move out of a place, to go into, a, like, a, to go into like a, a, a better place, a place that I'm excited to go to, like, when you see somewhere that you've lived, like, even a college dorm, they're like, this place is a piece of shit. A place that you've, like, made home and had memories in and then see it stripped down to its bare bones, so fucking depressing to me. Especially, I mean, imagine, like, th- that house for, like, a lot of couples is, like... A dream. It's, like, that's, like, your life, like... Right all right, like, we've got a house, like, this is where we're going to start our family, this is where we're going to be, I mean, and again, they, I I don't know what I would do, I would just, like, melt and not be able to go on if I had a house and somebody who made the house that dope, Mm -hmm. like, that is, that is such an awesome house, like, it's, so Denise is a writer, but Denise obviously is like a huge pop culture junkie and master of none. I don't think that they don't really get into that too much, although they do. I'll, I'll reference that in a second. Uh, it doesn't have it, it feels like it doesn't have a million screens everywhere. There's like a like the fireplace is kind of like the focal point. Of it's the like house. A, it's like a writer's haven. Right. So like she but you can still have TVs and screens and iPads and everything and have a house that looks that dope. So, very cool. Uh, the pop culture references are great. They've got chickens, and she names the chickens uh, Patty. Uh, I think Patty, Tina, and Shaka. Let yep. me see if I. That's correct. Re- yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tina, Shaka, and Patty. And as she's feeding them, she sings to Shaka, "I'm every chicken." <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> um. He oh uh, Dev during the big fight with his girlfriend calls her friends a clown caravan. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So like the the, the funny parts of this, like the laugh out loud parts of this, unfortunately, are all in arguments. I think those were the only times I laughed out loud. Uh, she says when when the, so when she's having a blowout with her wife Alicia, <laughs> she. I like this because it was like the most I've related to a character on that show. I don't know who you're supposed to relate to on that show. I like. I, I don't think you have to. I yeah. think you just relate to like the things that they, the situations. Right. right. That's th- right. That's true. And I, I honestly feel like most shows, I'll like relate to one character. But Master of None, you're right, is probably more the situations where like you'll saying. say like I know what that person's they're doing. Good, they're good. They're good at inter- like describing real life interpersonal relationship stuff that like that's the relatable material so this is why i related to denise because this is what she these are the things that she yells (laughs) in this blowout fight with her wife she says uh she's like i i haven't done anything i done everything for you i bought you roberta flax toothbrush (laughs) A thousand percent something I would do. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, I buy you something that probably means more to me than it means to <laughs> you, you fucking idiot. What's your problem? The, uh, and then she says, she, like, you should go to go to your, your, your new woman. She get you somebody's hair grease. I wrote like, it down. Go see the bitch. See if that bitch can get you Smokey Robinson's <laughs> hair grease. <laughs> that made me a legitimate laugh out loud. I was, after like such an intense argument, it's yeah. like fuck. This really, really sucks. She put, the parting uh, gift is like see if she can get you Smokey Robinson's <laughs> hair grease. I was like, what? So I love that so much because a, it's something that I would do, and b, it is a mil- b, it's something that Denise would do, but above all else, it is something Lena would do. <laughs> yeah, that is like the most breaking character like i if uh, lena lena's not doing um she's she's taking a break from like press podcasts and everything but she she does send her love um i would love to know if that was like improvised and if lena made a conscious choice to just stop playing denise and just clearly be herself because like i could totally see lena Buying somebody Smokey Robinson's hair grease and being like, ah, <laughs> and then being like, seems like something that you're, you're not, really you're not, excited. You're about. not excited about it. You you mind if I have it? <laughs> right. Like, oh, well, whatever. If you don't want it. Yeah. 
I don't know. I so I, I watched the whole thing and I was a big fan of it. It will be something that I rewatch. I recently rewatched Master of None, and I think that's always kind of going to be a show that I go back and watch. As you mentioned, I'll probably watch mornings like once or twice a year, Thanksgiving, probably probably as often, to be honest. But there's that's a show that like if I put on one episode, I just want to watch them all. Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's still very vibey. Like yeah. it, it, it sucks you in, and I, I think they really do a good job of taking their time and letting things like letting things sort of sink in and letting you sort of absorb what what's going on and i i've been impressed through like two and a half episodes of of the ability to like sort of play the long game like the there's a scene in episode one where they're having so much fun in the laundry room and they're just yeah, yeah and they're just like dancing in the laundry room and it's like that's they they let it breathe and they do like a whole song and it's there's nobody talking they're just dancing doing laundry and then in episode three there's an episode of lena just doing laundry by herself Mm -hmm. and it's like the juxtaposition of those two scenes is so depressing what uh what what song is playing when she's doing the first one is it i'm trying to think is it there is no song in the second one Okay, because there's a there's a that's what's like it, it it it's a scene where it's like they don't explicitly state it, but like after somebody leaves you, and she's like being in the house doing laundry oh, in that room, about, right? Okay, so I'm giving it away. So there's a there's an Alicia episode that is just Alicia. Okay, and there's a scene where she's sitting in the laundromat, and there's like an uplifting song. I don't think it's like I don't think it's everybody which plays in the first one, but um it's there's like a song like a dance song just blasting and she's sitting in the laundromat by herself just like not doing great and i'm like man i've never been to a laundromat before but like i've I've definitely had the, the experience that this person's had where like you're in an empty place and some like forced excitement is kind of being forced on you when you're like i am i'm not there well not even not only that but like sh- what i'm what where i was sort of going was like that is a trigger to to bringing back memories yeah. where like it's it's such a small thing that it that you like tie to somebody and then they're gone and even doing that thing is depressing yeah so i mean i hope that I hope that uh, everyone checks it out because it was really good. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm excited to watch the rest of it. So, yeah, I, uh, I think that I'm gonna, I'm gonna really like it. Did you see the tweet about Sweet Caroline? I did not. I saw a bunch of people tweeting about Sweet Caroline, but I did not see what it. I tried to look it up. It's very hard to like find, find the right. source material Same. of a lot of Twitter activity. Let me see if I can find it. I can tell you it off the top of my head if I can't find it, but. It was a person saying, um, "Oops, sorry." I DJed a '70s party last night. Did not know this song had that effect on people, and it's a bunch of people. Lord forgive me. It's a it's a bunch of predominantly white people uh, going crazy and dancing to that song. I think that most of the reaction to that tweet was, "How'd you not? Yes, know that's... you did know that. Oh, okay, like yeah. everybody knows that yeah. that song." makes people sing along and go crazy to it but i don't know I, if i was outside of boston i might like underestimate the power of sweet caroline getting really? getting the crowd going yeah like how many places do you see outside outside of boston where like sweet caroline yeah gets, I don't know. gets the crowd jumping yeah that's true like I, I obviously guess I like didn't, journey i guess i didn't consider it mr a, brightside an at only in boston type of experience but my favorite sweet caroline uh moment or piece of material you ever see the video of the uh the guy playing sweet caroline up on stage at a bar like uh, acoustic guitar and then all of a sudden you see a guy go around the corner and he walks up on stage and grabs the guys the grab grabs the guy by both legs and just flips him and he goes down so hard it's such a dick move yeah like it's a horrible horrible video but like the thud is very funny then the guy playing guitar is like what the fuck man Jeez. So, I mean, 
on the subject of what the fuck and Sweet Caroline, it brought us to it brings us to a point that I was trying to get to at some point, but I'd uh, honestly just forgotten about it. And I think we've just had so much tent that we haven't had the, the chance to do it. Uh, Sweet Caroline uh, obviously is a is a famously uh, pervy, yes, problematic song. It's about a picture of a nine year old Caroline Kennedy sitting on a horse, and it inspired him to write. Uh, reaching out, touching song. me, touching you. Now I look at the night, and it don't seem so lonely. We fill it up with only two, and when I hurt, hurting runs off my shoulder. How can I hurt when holding you? Mm. Warm, mm. touching warm, reaching out, touching me, touching you. Mm-mm. So good, you know. Um, and I uh, th- this this piece notes that the so good, so good, so good is not in the song, but that has become part of it. So I guess it... It kind of plays to, I always say, like, when someone looks back on a piece of art and they say, like, hey, that does not hold up right now. I'm always like, not only does it not hold up, like, we, the audience, shame on us because we watch that. Yeah. Uh, So, Neil Diamond and everybody who decided this song is so good that we're going to add (laughs) so good, so good. (laughs) Going to make it even weirder. Yeah. We're gonna say yeah. We're we're gonna participate in making it like a little pervier. It did make it does get us to uh, cancelable songs though. I did see you send a tweet about that and yeah. like your. Uh, I listened to your uh, suggestion. Yeah, I don't know if you did multiple, but the one that I saw, I was like, wow. I did not know that this song started like this. Did you know that song though? N- yeah, like I know that song. That yeah. song's a, a jam. Classic, yeah. yeah. And I, I just assumed, like, I, I didn't recognize it based off of the uh, the artist and the song title. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I bet this is some fucking stupid song that only DJ knows. Yeah. I clicked on it. And I was like, this is a fucking, like, uh, everybody has to know this song. It has heard this song a million times. The fact that it started with, like, she was only 16 or whatever it She's is. She's just 16 years old. That is so Leave fucking bad. Alone, say. That is uh, "Into the Night" by Benny Mardones. Bar- Mardones, Mardones. Uh, uh, apologies on the pronunci- on not knowing the last name. Also, apologies on Liking I tweeted that about song. that song <laughs> being like really pervy and being like, "How was this allowed? What's wrong with us?" Like even like I it came out in 1980, but I heard it in the 90s, and it was because that that song has been played forever and ever and ever. But like I heard that as a kid, and I remember remarking like, "Oh, she's just 16 years old. I hope he's not like talking about like dating her. Whatever. He's not saying that anymore. It's a couple more words into the song. Like I'll just pretend it's about something else or whatever. And like for years and years and years, like liked that song. And just like everybody loved that song. Like everybody took that song as like, I'm not crazy about the beginning, but <laughs> he just like pretend he doesn't say those words. So I don't know what rationale people had, but that song was so big. And if you don't know what we're talking about, if you look it up, you'll know that's like an iconic piano line. Like you, you bring up that song, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. That song was so big. That was like Mr. Brightside big. It was on the charts at like number one for a long time and then left. And I think like two years later, everyone was like, hey, remember that song? Yo, that song is so good. <laughs> and it was like back on the charts. And like he's recorded it a million different times, put it out a million different times. And every time he does, everyone's like, Yes, dude. <laughs> Great song. So, uh, you would uh, think that, like, if he's re recording it and putting it back out, maybe he's like, well, clean she's up the just lyrics. 18 years right, old. Like, she's just like 26, and I'm 39, <laughs> and it's weird, but like, well, like we're both age is just a number. Adults. <laughs> right. But you know, if you say that, and people are going to be like, yeah, isn't that the name of that Aaliyah album that she made when she was 13? That's a good point. Produced by R. Kelly. Where the Wikipedia page says that they would like take breaks yeah. in quotes, and you're like, why is that in quotes? What do you like? Or it was like they would like quote unquote like watch movies watch or something. Movie, yeah, it's like uh, horrible, troubling stuff. But um, I didn't know when I uh, kind of innocently putting that song on blast because it it came up in in conversation. We were talking about someone taught someone brought up baby, it's cold outside, and how one of my friends was arguing that like if you if that song like means something to you and like that's like you remember like listening to it with your family around Christmas time, like some people who aren't with us anymore and everything, like that's like 
you shouldn't feel bad about yourself for I- yeah. enjoying a song or whatever, which uh, he was making a totally reasonable argument. I feel like uh, the same way about like cancelable cancelable artists who make songs. I I go back and forth. Like I I think that I mean it's it's to each their own. Like I I personally like can't hear R. Kelly without thinking about R. Kelly and like the, just the experience is, is ruined for me. But anyway, uh, I tweeted out. I was like, hey, we were having a conversation about like cancelable songs. Uh, this one sinks itself in the first line. What up with that? And like a bunch of people responded like, oh my God, like talking about it. Like, yeah, I never considered this such a pervy song. I looked up, I looked him up and like, I think he died last year or something. He had like a long battle with Parkinson's. We'll watch some videos with interviews of him. Seemed like not a terrible person. Although like his explanation and he explained the song of like, we were, uh, there was this family that lived near me. Uh, we, I had these neighbors in my apartment building and their father, they, they, like, they, they were struggling. They weren't making a lot of money. And the father, something happened where his ship came in, made a lot of money and he left them. So they were really kind of fending for themselves. And I was keeping an eye on them and I was like giving them tasks to do just so I could, just so they could have some money. And uh, they were just like really sweet kids. And one day my co-writer and i were working on this song and like we just loved the groove of it but we just couldn't think of the words we couldn't think of a melody and the daughter came by and she was getting ready for school and she was like hey like what do you guys you guys been up all night and like we'd been partying also and we were doing it so like we were kind of strung out and she came by and she did whatever like she i don't know like she brought something to eat or something and then like she went off to school and my co-writer made a comment about like, oh man, like, but boy, she's she she's pretty or something. And I said to him, she's 16 years old. Leave her alone. And then I thought, that's a great lyric. So he made that the first lyric. And I'm not trying to speak ill of the dead here, but I'm like, you got to understand how that's going to be perceived. <laughs> a yes. B. Then the song goes on to right, be like, like, she's 16 years old. Leave her alone. We're they in love. say, yeah. and like, I'm just trying to be with her. Yeah. And then like, he goes on to explain. He was like, I like the idea of a song saying, if, situ- if like we were in different situations, if the world was different, if like I was this different person and you were this different person, I feel that like we could have something special. And like saying that in a vacuum is like... A, in the right circumstances, an okay idea. Still but I'm like fucking creepy. But when a sixteen-year-old inspired yeah. a sixteen-year-old girl inspired you to write that. So like, really, there was just kind of no outs there. But I, I, I did feel bad that I was like kind of making fun of somebody who just died. Uh, another weird thing: the song was originally titled. The song is called "Into the Night," and it's called "Into the Night" because radio rejected. Its original title, which was "She's Only 16. She's Just Sixteen Years oh, Old," no. and I'm like, dude. So like, there's no good way to spin that. That is an extremely pervy, creepy song. Yeah, and like the title thing makes it so much worse because you're like steering you into know, like, the that fact. That was just like, like selling point. Yeah, which is so weird that 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 song has so many good things going for it. Yeah, they, why they, would I you saying it's a jam? I man, just. And it's such an easy out. Just she's 18 years old. And like, so imagine these two dudes. And I know that he explained this is how they came up with the song. And like the girl came by, he de- like defended her to this like guy. There was never a conversation, even like from like the record label. There was never like a right. discussion being like, I get it, guys. But like people are going to read this wrong. Imagine these two songwriters. And again, I kind of call BS on their explanation. But imagine that they're like, all right, let's come up with this song where there's a love i can't have we're kept apart separated by fools who don't know what love is that's a lyric from that song that if it were not coming for right fools. after saying she's just 16 years old leave her alone they say it would be a fine lyric we're like okay so all right we've got these we've got the guy we've got the girl and the the dad doesn't want the 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 guy to be with the girl it's a whole Romeo and Juliet situation. Right. All right. So what would be a reason that would keep – that would make a dad not want his child 
to be with this other guy. I and like, got it. The co-writer's like, uh, she's a child. <laughs> religion or like the like the 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 parents are old school and like the, the like the, the parents are bigots or they're racists or like they're whatever like all, all these things over the years that have like kept people apart and the guy's like yeah those are okay uh what if it's because she's a child <laughs> and you're like so that the dad's the good guy the dad that's keeping them apart is the good guy being like hey no this can't be like a the guy who's like rejecting a, pedophilia? Right, like a pedophile relationship. And they ended up going with that. And they're for good measure, they were like... And it went through a bunch of channels, like a bunch of like corporate channels. Apparently, it did get some backlash where people did say, what the fuck's going on with those lyrics? But it didn't stop it. Like, let me look this up. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think that it's it maybe is more stunning that it passed through the ringer more than it than it was written it uh song is unusual for being one of only 10 recordings to ever ascend to the top 20 of the billboard hot 100 chart twice the chartings in 1980 and 1989 were of two similar but separate recordings chubby checker was the first to do this with his cover of the twist a single that went number one in september 1960 and again in january 1962 so this now I just kind of want to see the other examples of that. But, man, I, I would just say, I'd say also stay away from the music video. Have you seen the, did you see the music video? Uh, yeah, well, that's why you, you linked it, and I He's watched like it. He's, like, rolling and, his yeah. eyes and, like, this guy doesn't fucking Can you believe it. this guy trying to keep true love apart? And I'm like, people watched this <laughs> and said, number one on the charts, It doesn't please. do him any favors, that's for sure. Oh, my God. Is there any better... They, I mean, every place would be a better place to uh, to end this this podcast. But we got tent coming up. Excited about that. We were gonna have Will on this episode. Ooh. I got some questions about uh, shorts. I think Will might be the good guy to answer those questions. Uh, he he can't make it though. He can't. Here's an idea though. What if we uh? What if we instead of instead of brains? Who called it brainstorming and not? Pitch and tent. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Pitch and tent. There you go. 